Meanwhile, we expect to hear more from the White House today about growing concerns of a conflict in the Middle East that could spread to the region. And top of mind, this headline, the killing of a top Hamas leader in Iran. So Iran blames Israel, who so far has not owned that strike. That leader was in Iran's capital city for the swearing in of Iran's president when the airstrike hit. But this is an escalation. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has tried to avoid. In fact, we just got these comments from the Secretary of State from his post in Singapore. Listen. Well, of course, I've seen, uh, seen the reports. Uh, and uh, what I, all I can tell you uh, right now is I think nothing takes away from the importance of, as I said a moment ago, uh, getting to the ceasefire, which is manifestly in the interests of the hostages and bringing them home. It's manifestly in the interests of Palestinians who are suffering terribly every single day, children, women, men in Gaza who've been caught in this crossfire of Hamas's making. It's profoundly in the interest of uh, trying to put things on a better path, not only in Gaza, but actually throughout the region. It's on a better path and try to keep a lid on all of this. Let's bring in CBS News correspondent Imtiaz Tayab. Imtiaz, you're in Beirut. This strike in Iran follows a strike where you are in Beirut. What is the response there in Beirut and also out of Iran today? Yeah, Reid, uh, fury is the answer. Uh, there is fury here in Lebanon. There's fury, of course, from Hamas in Gaza and fury from Tehran following these two assassinations, which really has sort of pushed us to a place where we haven't been in a very long time here in the Middle East, which is this concern that we could see a wider war spread across the region involving actors who are incredibly well armed and incredibly powerful and incredibly determined to fight. Now, as we've been hearing from the secretary that uh, he said that it was in the interest of everybody to try to de-escalate the situation. But when we focus on the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh in Iran, in Iran, Iranian territory as a guest of the Iranians attending the inauguration of the new Iranian president. Not only is this a major breakdown of Iran's security apparatus, it is devastatingly humiliating for them as well. Now, many, of course, fearing that Iran will carry out some sort of retaliatory attack, but we've been hearing from sources inside Iran that at this very moment, the Iranian leadership is really trying to understand how this security breakdown could happen that Ismail Haniyeh could be assassinated inside their home, as they described it. And so many are hoping that any kind of retaliation, if it's going to come, won't come soon. But that doesn't mean the situation here is any less tense. Of course, the uh, issue with uh, the worries of a widening regional conflict, very much top of mind of leaders. But also, we understand there is some reporting that the person who was killed in Iran was part of some talks, some hostage release negotiation talks, and now those talks relative to the release of hostages could be in jeopardy. What do you know about that? Yeah, no, look, let's be clear. Ismail Haniyeh is one of the most well-known uh, Hamas leaders. He was the political leader and has a very long history uh, in Palestinian politics and, of course, with Hamas. And he was the lead negotiator. This is a man who negotiated indirectly with the U.S., indirectly with Israel. Um, and he's widely seen, relative to Hamas, it has to be said, but widely seen as far more pragmatic than the military leaders inside of Hamas who are directing the war in Gaza, which we've seen is so devastating. So the fact that Ismail Haniyeh would be assassinated by Israel, although as we've been saying, Israel remaining silent, not saying anything about it, although of course uh, Hamas and uh, Iran saying that they're behind this assassination, the fact that he's been killed, the man who is negotiating with Israel, with the U.S., albeit indirectly, says, or at least we've been hearing from, from the Hamas leadership and from others as well, that to kill somebody who was so directly involved with the negotiations, that these negotiations are all but dead. Imtiaz Tayab, thank you so much for that live report. The world watches and waits.